Hello everyone. In today's video, I will use already kit descriptors that I calculated them previously. And then I'll train a bunch of machine learning models. Uh, from that, I'll select the best models based on uh, parameters. Uh, and then I'll do some uh, fine tuning of some of these parameters of the best models. And then I'll save these uh, models for future use. Okay, so in this video, uh, I'll use RD kit descriptors to develop a machine learning model that can uh, predict the HOMO LUMO energy gap of uh, molecules. But first, HOMO stands for highest occupied molecular orbital, and LUMO stands for lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So the HOMO LUMO molecular orbitals are called frontier molecular orbitals. These are outer orbitals that are involved in chemical bond formation. Uh, especially the HOMO LUMO uh, molecular orbitals are very helpful to explain uh, pericyclic reactions such as cycloaddition, electrocyclic reaction, and sigma tropic rearrangement uh, reactions. In addition, the UV visible spectroscopy, the absorbance of organic molecules, especially that have extended uh, conjugated double bonds, uh, can be rationalized using the HOMO LUMO energy gap of uh, molecules. So, in this website, say for instance, uh, if you look at the uh, absorbance of uh, eating, uh, so it has only one double bond. The highest occupied molecular orbital is a pi orbital here. The pi antibonding molecular orbital is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So in order to promote an electron from this uh, highest occupied molecular orbital of ethane, it requires 173 kilocalorie per mole energy. That means to promote uh, this one electron to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. If you extend the conjugation, if you add one more uh, double bond, which is 1,3-butadiene, this is 1,3-butadiene. In this case, uh, the absorbance decreases uh, from 173 to 132 kilocalorie per mole. As the number of conjugated double bonds increases, the energy gap uh, decreases. If you look at this one, this is uh, 135 hexatrine. You have three conjugated double bonds the energy will be reduced to 111 kilocalorie per mole. If the number of extended conjugated double bonds increases, um, generally the energy gap, the HOMO LUMO energy gap decreases. If you have, say, for instance, 11 conjugated double bonds in the case of uh, beta carotene, the absorbance of this molecule is in the visible region. If you look at the other molecules, they absorb in the UV region. UV region is usually less than uh, 400 nanometer. If you have uh, uh, between 400 and 800 nanometer, that is a visible region. So the take home message is, as the number of conjugated double bonds increases, the HOMO LUMO energy gap of a molecule decreases and uh, it is energy. If it absorbs energy, the energy becomes smaller. Uh, generally, molecules that have uh, extended conjugated double bonds uh, absorb in the visible region and uh, they appear uh, colored. So that is the most important thing. So generally, these uh, molecular orbitals, the uh, HOMO LUMO molecular orbitals are uh, very helpful to explain reactivity as well as the UV absorbance of uh, a molecule. The data that we'll be using in this uh, video is obtained from a published paper. The paper is free, so you can access it using this link. So in this paper, what they did was um, they uh, generated uh, 2,900 for smile strings, and they calculated the HOMO LUMO energy gap of molecules in kilocalorie per mole using uh, density functional theory. So last time I already explained how to calculate the uh, RD kits uh, and moderate molecular descriptors using uh, these uh, smiles. So uh, you can access that part using uh, this link. I'll go through that one. So 
today we will use that uh, already kit descriptors and then uh, uh, we will develop a machine learning model so in today's video we'll start from uh, in today's video we'll start from here which means we already calculated uh, 200 uh, already kit descriptors using this function so we had uh, 200 molecular descriptors for uh, 2873 uh, uh, smiles this were a clean structure um, and then we'll use this to uh, develop a machine learning model so the first thing we need to do is we need to remove uh, highly correlated features if the features are highly correlated it's considered as duplicate features so we need to remove them in this case i wrote a function to remove uh, features that have uh, uh, a correlation of greater than or equal to 0.9 uh, so this function is mainly used to remove uh, highly correlated features so uh, if you run that which is we had 200 molecular descriptors now the number reduced to 167 uh, descriptors um, furthermore we can also remove uh, features that have very low variance especially if they have very low variance like uh, less than or equal to 0 0.1 so if you drop that uh, the number of uh, features becomes 101 so this 101 uh, features will be used to develop a machine learning model so uh, x in this case uh, x is a number of features we have the number of features which is 101 we also want to put the the homo lumo energy gap of a molecules to y variable so if you run this the features will be stored in the x variable and the uh, labels which are the homo lumo energy gap of the molecules will be stored in y so the next thing you need to do is we need to uh, split the data for training and the test uh, scikit-learn has a function for to do that uh, so this train test split will be used to split the data for training and the test so the test size here is 0 0.3 which means 70% uh, of the data will be used for training and 30% will be used for testing uh, the next thing is we need to import um, a lazy predict uh, this lazy predict has uh, 42 machine learning models uh, so we can train all these models using uh, a single line of code so if you do that uh, we can train um, all this uh, oh so i didn't run this one so first we need to uh, run this we need to split the data and then uh, we need to import the lazy predicts uh, uh, to uh, train uh, 42 machine learning uh, models with, uh, with a single line of uh, code. Uh, the other uh, advantage of using uh, these lazy predict uh, regressors is that uh, you don't need to do any data pre-processing. Uh, okay, so these are the, the models we used. There are 40 machine learning models, regressors the best models are usually found on the top so the best model is a uh, light gbm regressor uh, so you can you can easily identify that by looking at uh, root mean square error uh, usually it will have the smallest number this is the smallest number this is the second smallest number which means uh, these two are uh, this is the best one and this is the second best so we'll use these two models uh, to fine tune their parameters and then uh, use them for uh, as a final model so the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to import uh, uh, these two models the first one is uh, haste gradient uh, boosting regressor and the second one is light gbm regressor so we need to import these uh, models and then we need to inst instantiate them using this cell uh, the next thing here is we need to uh, uh, pre-process the data. We need to use a standard scalar. Standard scalar will use this formula. So uh, we need to use a standard scalar and then uh, we have to use um, cross-validation to make sure the, the results are consistent. Uh, just to, to make sure the results are consistent, we need to do this. Uh, uh, okay 
let's run this cell uh, it may take some time okay so as we can see uh, the mean absolute error in kilocalorie per mole is uh, for light GBM uh, ranges between um, uh, 6.25 to 7.51 so the average is uh, 6.96 so this is a five-fold cross validation uh, as you can see uh, the results are somehow consistent uh, uh, similarly if you look at the hist gradient boosting regressor uh, this is the same thing which is five-fold cross validation so the range is uh, pretty much uh, uh, similar as you can see the results are very similar so the next thing we need to do is we need to fine tune the parameters um, i just commented this part uh, uh, because it takes a uh, longer time but uh, what i did was uh, uh, using these parameters i was trying to search uh, best uh, uh, parameters uh, in that case for light GBM, I got the maximum depth 5, uh, minimum sample split for uh, number of estimators 800, maximum features auto. So I just uh, commented them over here. Uh, this takes a longer time, uh, but uh, you can uh, uncomment to run the optimization. For uh, gradient boosting regressor the best learning parameter was uh, 0.22 so this was the, uh, the one that gave the best result let's uh, train using the best parameters uh, for both models you can use the test data to predict uh, the homo lumo energy gap of the molecules for the test data in this case the best results were obtained uh, using the average prediction of the two models uh, instead of individual models uh, you can see the uh, mean absolute error is 6.01 if you put that in a data frame uh, we can easily see the actual and the predicted values uh, are pretty much very close to each other to see them better we can uh, plot them if we plot uh, uh, we can get this one so these are observed energy gap and this is a predicted energy gap so the values are very close to each other if you compare this result with the published data so in the published data uh, uh, the r squared was uh, 0 0.89 and the mean absolute error was 6.26 so they used uh, multiple fingerprints so if you look at the results they are uh, pretty much closer to uh, the data that we have uh, so the the descriptors are different here are radicate descriptors in the published paper they used multiple molecular fingerprints um, so the results are comparable at least so the last thing we need to do is we need to save uh, the models for future use we don't need to do uh, training so we we'll just simply run this uh, code to save the models i hope uh, this video will help you to develop machine learning models for your projects in the next video i will show you how to use the saved models to predict the homo lumo energy gap of uh, new molecules uh, that is it for today uh, thank you for watching